Yeah, you know, everybody from France is okay. <laughs> so on Monday, um, I went to my favorite massage parlor microbrewery, the Hoppy Ending, and it was closed. And it sucked because it was mug and tug night. And I, was, I was really looking forward to that. So that's how my Monday started. Tuesday, I broke up a fight between a rabbi and a priest. We were in a delicatessen eating, and the rabbi and priest were arguing. So I kind of stuck my head in to see what was going on. And the priest kept telling the rabbi, you've got to try this ham, it's delicious. And the rabbi kept telling the priest, we don't eat ham, it's not kosher. And he enjoys his matzo ball soup. Well, this kept on going on for 15 minutes, and their voices got elevated. So I walked over and said, I think I can handle this. I said to the priest, I go, how's your sex life with your wife? And the priest says, oh, don't you know we're not allowed to be married and have sex? I said, you should try it. It's better than the ham. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was driving to work. I was driving to the show tonight, and I got pulled over by one of North Carolina's finest. He said you were driving a little too slow on the freeway and figured I was under the influence. I told him, no, everything's okay. I have Parkinson's, and I just drive slow. He goes, well... Can I see, he doesn't ask for my driver's license or registration, he asked if he could have my name. I said, you could, but that'd be a hell of a coincidence. <laughs> he said, do you think you're a funny guy? I said, I'll know in an hour and a half at the OPPP. <laughs> so um, I hosted the other night, Wednesday night, I hosted a Parkinson's game night at my apartment complex. I had all my Parkinson's friends come over. We spent the first 15 minutes shaking hands. <laughs> <laughs> From then we had a game night and we, the games I brought out were Jenga, Operation, and Pick Up Sticks. We tried to make a house of cards also. That didn't go too well. So um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2013 when I was living in San Francisco. And I joined a support group right away to help me deal with the changes that were going to be happening in my life. You see me shaking a little, that just means I need a martini stirred. <laughs> but um, in San Francisco, we were at a support group for Parkinson's individuals that was sponsored by a cannabis club. And it was really great. The club took good care of us. We would meet every Monday for breakfast. And the name of our group was called The Wake, Shake, and Bake. <laughs> They would have us over for a potluck dinner once a month on Sundays. We would serve chicken pot pies, pot roast, crock pot chili, and pot stickers. And one of my friends who was part of the group can't afford pot anymore, so he's been smoking tumbleweed. You don't put it in a pipe, you don't bong it, you roll it. I myself don't smoke pot anymore. I do edibles, but I'm afraid my suppliers are ripping me off. I get my edibles from KFC, Marie Callender's, and Hormel. And I've been eating chicken pot pies and corned beef hash for the last year and a half. And haven't gotten high once, but I've put on 30 pounds. <laughs> so I have a black friend who um, was raised in a Jewish family. And he did very well for himself in business, so he decided he wanted to give back to the black community in any way he could. So he opened up a hair salon bakery and calls it the Dreadlocks and Bagel. <laughs> so um, in living in the Bay Area in San Francisco, there's a lot of great restaurants. I heard from one of the ones I used to eat at all the time. It was a Vietnamese place in the city that was all you can eat. And I would go there and graze for two hours, three times a week and really take advantage of the all you can eat rules. So they wrote me a letter to say they miss me. I've been out of the Bay Area for two and a half years. And they said that in my honor, they named a plate after me. It's called You Fat Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I haven't been dating a lot since I moved to North Carolina. But I'm starting to put it out there and reach out to women. I went onto a Thailand website and met a woman from Thailand who lives in Charlotte. She's a little younger than me, and um, we had a good hangout for our first date. English was a barrier, and I kept asking her, what part of Thailand are you from? And she kept on going, hammer dick. 
Hammer Dick, Hammer Dick. And I realized she meant she was from Bangkok. <laughs> I met, went out on a blind date with a woman who works for the DMV. She invited me over to her house, which I thought was weird because we hadn't met yet. So she said, just get comfortable, sit down and relax. I'll be out in a few minutes. So I'm looking around her house and I can tell she works for the DMV because all the signs in her house are DMV traffic signal signs. One is stop, enter slowly, no parking in rear, watch for children. <laughs> but the weirdest thing was she gave, told me to take a number and sit down and she'll call me when she's ready. <laughs> So I have a new urologist, his name is Dick Dribble. He's a vegetarian. He serves peas and leeks in his waiting room. Is it just me or does anybody else think it's weird that we wash our hair with a product that has poo in its name? <laughs> Radio stations on the West Coast all begin with the letter K. So whenever I was dating on the West Coast, I would preset my radio stations to get women in the mood when we would come back to my apartment. First station I would program would be KISS. So I hope we would be able to make out a little and start getting the situation moving in the right direction. After KISS, the radio station would be K-I-N-K. -K. And then I realized going to kink after kissing was a little too fast, so I would tone it down a little and went back to KISS. If kissing was going well, I would skip all the way over kink and go to KLIT. <laughs> KLIT was the station that rang everybody's bell. Every time I tried changing the station back, she would move it back to KLIT. And so if that was going well, we would move on to KOCK, the rock hard station. And if that was going, if that was going well, we would end up at KOME. <laughs> Some facts about people with Parkinson's disease. We don't like, um, our favorite rock band is the Grateful Dead because of their sh song Shakedown Street. We um, like shaker furniture. We all hate our pharmacists because they, we know they're laughing behind our backs when they put our prescription in childproof safety caps. And people with Parkinson's should never wear button fly pants when they're drinking. <laughs> I'm Glenn Lurie, thanks a lot for coming out tonight, you guys. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Mr. Glenn Laurie.